Hello, Internet. Now please, hold on to your butt. As two comedians attempt to talk about serious subjects in a not-so-serious manner. From the mysterious to the utterly vicious, everything is fair game. This is the Kill Them With Comedy Podcast, featuring true crime, amazing events, conspiracies, unsolved mysteries, and an array of weird and wonderful topics, all for your enjoyment. You're welcome. And that proves that even people that you would trust with your life can, at some point, go f***ing crazy. There we go, and welcome everybody hey. to the Kill Them With Comedy Podcast, episode 24. I am your co-host, uh, the comedic babyface, KD Hinken, and I am joined by the post-apocalyptic metal treehouse, bucket man himself, kind of, I guess, Nathan Parrish. <laughs> How are you, sir? How's it going? Yeah, not so bad. I've got, I've got the PC, which I was playing Batman on earlier. I've got PS4, I've got the Xbox, I've got the Switch over the back. I've got a PlayStation 1 over there. I've got a, oh. a PlayStation 2 over there. I've got an Xbox original. I've got a Super Nintendo. I've got a Mega Drive. I've got a four-in-one combination retro arcade game thing. And I've also got <laughs> myself a Mega Drive and a, and a Game Boy as well. So I've got myself a flashlight. Yes! <laughs> so do I. That's I actually don't but I really want to buy one. <laughs> <laughs> I got one when I was at uni. It was um it was a strange purchase, but you know what? It was worth the time. At the time I told my friends that I got it as a a a a, a like a, a gift or a winning of a prize of some kind. Yeah, like yeah. That. Nah. Nah, I bought a fake pussy. Nah, whatever. <laughs> but mate, in all fairness, ladies are allowed to buy fake willies all the time. Have all yeah. the variances. Well, oh, the only problem with it was it was very loud. <laughs> what are you doing? That's that's exactly the thought, the the look that I had. You see, because the thing is, because it's supposed to like suction, you sort of tighten up the end, and then you use it on yourself, obviously. But like, <laughs> if you haven't got the suction quite right, or well, there's like a slight issue with the the how tight the valve gets, it starts going like. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, I've heard about that. Um, tiny penis syndrome, I think it's called. <laughs> <laughs> oh, what was that? Um, there was uh, your mum's house. That was it. I know how they written mm. that. You had a your mum's house thing. The, the story you. I watched your me... mum's house live. I watched your mum's house live, and it was please, the please best. Please, can we clarify what you I've mean by seen. that? You didn't so, watch my mum's house live. No, no, you didn't go on your mum's house. Friends. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, your mum's house is um, is Tom Segura and Christina Pajitsky's or uh, Christina P's, um, P. Yeah, um, uh, podcast. They they've been going for fucking ages. Yeah. You know, like big, oh, hang on, this out a bit further. big fo- like um, friends of Joe Rogan, Rogan and yeah, stuff yeah. like that. I can tell. I'm I'm assuming they started not just after him, but not that long after him. If I remember mm. the amounts, I swear it's over thousands, yeah. isn't it now? So, uh, I'm not sure actually. I have to double yeah. check that because I, I, it's a hell of a lot either way. Yeah, either, yeah, and yeah. um, yeah, they started doing the live shows, and the most like the the last one, oh, that that one was bad. Like it had some serious, serious shit because like they they always they always start off nice and easy on these and they give you just a few TikToks from Christina Pajitsky's like TikTok. Yeah. Um uh so w- before duration. you get into it, was there something you said you have to pay for as well to watch? Oh yeah you gotta pay for the live show, yeah, because because the it's live so show they've got to set it up in di- nah nah the reason why is because it's not going through YouTube or anything like that. And they have to set it up themselves because if they went on YouTube or something like that, they would get thrown off of it and also like but they they wouldn't really get enough of it. They just they just wouldn't get as much money. Oh to no, get the they money wouldn't with... be allowed. No, they they oh, no. just really <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah. Maybe I should hold back to your Okay, I don't yeah, know. Yeah, so, so, so 
yeah, it starts off easy on one of these things, and they're like they've got themselves like their their um, TikToks and stuff like that. As I say, they've got a few skits that they make specifically for the show. They got Marcus King and the Marcus King Band to come and play a couple of songs like for the show. They got a guy called Chris De Stefano who's taken over for um. I know him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's That's, taken um... over for, for uh, Whiskey Ginger for a bit. Has he taken it over now? I know who was doing the residency. Oh, I don't know whether he's taking it over. He was, he was just doing, doing the residency. residency. Yeah, that's, yeah, I think that's, that's just saying, yeah. finished now. He, he's do, uh, also doing um, the podcast for some reason with Sal Volcano from Infactical Jokers. Ah. Hey, yeah, but so basically, yeah. That's what it's called. Basically, he, yeah, they, 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 they all sort of set this up. And it, it, sort of, it is definitely worth the money because it's a, it's a four, the three to four hour long show most of the time. Like they got they got Christina in a load of like fake tattoos and fake hair and fake massive tits and shit so that she could look like 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 a sort of a suicide girls model gone wrong almost. Yeah. You know what I mean? Oh, I forgot and, about suicide um, girls completely. Yeah. That's yeah. Later. Carry on. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and then they sort of they 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 get to the thing they call the heavy segment. Now, the heavy segment is the bit where they show you shit that they would never be allowed to show you on YouTube, ever, ever, Oh, because yeah, they show ever, a lot ever, of videos ever. and stuff, don't they, on their podcast? Yeah, right? and they yeah, comment okay. them on while it's yeah, going on. Yeah, yeah. Now, okay. they start off chill, okay. and like it's just, it's just casual bits of BDSM and things like this. Like they have, a, they have a woman at one point, and she's just looking so upset. They just like close fucking mouse traps on either one of the labian it's like, for <laughs> sake, i don't need to see this shit just, this just, is for, weird for simpletons that's the flappy bits that's the flappy bits yeah okay uh, <laughs> they had a they had this this one of a japanese woman who literally shat into a fucking a subway like sandwich like like literally it's got salad in there. It's opened up, and then she just lays just chunks. <laughs> I like how that's the part. And not one it's sweet. It's, it's yeah, not, not plain one bread. sweet. It's, not plain. it's healthy. It's no. healthy. Oh, it's, yeah, it's got the lettuce. There's a salad. This is a proper sandwich. She's gone yeah, to the yeah. effort the of making it have a flavor profile. <laughs> but she, oh, she lays like life. one load of chunks, a second load of chunks, a third load of chunks. I have no idea how this woman could shit this much and then you watch another japanese dude eat it I mean, yeah it doesn't surprise me that that happens <laughs> doesn't surprise... no no <laughs> okay um yep and that's I mean, that not the sounds like something off. i'd want to pay to watch that sounds like something i'd want yeah. to pay to watch that's something i'd have to pay to watch like you said yeah <laughs> that's not even the worst bit carl there was a bit near the end where there was just two dudes just fucking in shit just fucking in <laughs> shit all sorts of shit all over the place just fucking in shit all right <laughs> that's not the worst bit carl it gets worse the very worst video they showed I mean, the, the, just to will... clarify, though, the fucking in shit thing, yeah. it doesn't sound bad to me in the sense that <laughs> I can understand, I can't understand it, but I get that people would do that, sure. I don't want to watch maybe. it, but I get that they maybe. do that. Maybe, maybe, but not in this scenario, man. This I, I, shit is fucking wanna... weird. Yeah, oh, like, yeah, they got weird with it, dude. They They're were, like, eating shit, ass. Of course and... they did. Well, exactly. <laughs> like, whatever you're doing, once you're in a pile of shit having sex, anything yeah. else is pretty tame compared to yeah. what you're doing to begin with. A apart from the final video, Carl, because the final video <laughs> was a Russian dude uh, doing surgery on his own eye. Okay. So he goes in close. Gonna say he's like, penis, so I'm, I'm still not as <laughs> not too bad. Okay. So, <laughs> but he's going, this guy's going in close and he's talking. He's like, and he just goes, it's like gets a syringe injects into his eye in like multiple spots to like numb his eye. Then he gets 
he gets another needle and he sort of pulls it down. And you see he's got a growth about here and he just starts pulling at it. And <laughs> it's okay it's okay you can get the worst the worst bit carl the worst bit carl is when he's finally got that bit out he starts pulling the bits out with his fucking fingers and you're seeing his eye bulge out and the <laughs> top layer the white layer of his eye is peeling off in his fingers all the way around. Ah. <laughs> See, that, the, the concept of that doesn't gross me out. I've had to watch like, laser eye surgery and stuff, but just the idea that someone's doing it to themselves and why, why they would do that. Not a case of the fact they're doing it. Just once again, as yeah. always, why? At that stage, at that stage, just get rid of your eye. If it's that much of a problem, just don't have an eye. It's better overall for everyone. <laughs> I was really worried where you were going at that point because you were saying oh. at, that, at that time and then you went like that and I thought about the fleshlight. <laughs> <laughs> I thought the video was going and somewhere that's, else after. That's, got what, that's what got me really horny. And... <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. It, it will haunt me for the rest of my days. I have never seen something so horrendous in my entire life. Excellent use of 10 quid. What, 10 quid for one episode, though? Well, it's $10, so it was probably like eight sixty or something like that. It's fine. I mean, for that price, you could get the um, WWE Network for nine ninety nine and go on and watch WrestleMania week, which is happening right now, and it's going to see wrestling from last Ooh. Monday up until next Thursday. Oh, it's Ooh. lovely, Nathan. It's lovely. <laughs> so much wrestling right now. <laughs> oh, Actually, yeah, I didn't, I didn't say this. This is quite lovely as well. Huh? Yeah. What did I watch? I watched uh, Kong versus Godzilla. That's what I watched. Yeah, was that good? It was. It was entertaining. It was very entertaining. See, that's what I've heard. It's a long I've time heard to a lot get of people into just it. go like, "Yeah, there were some great fights and stuff like that," but the story doesn't really hold together all that well. And it's like, there's a good. It's one of those few films. And one thing I did like about it is, you know, how every film now. I won't say what it is either, but every film nowadays has like they give away everything that's going to happen in the trailer. There's no surprises yeah. because it's all in the trailer. This one, it's like yeah. they really didn't include a big part of what happens. That's good. Hang on, I've got to blow my bloody nose. This is getting ridiculous. <laughs> oh, yeah, as well. I did. I forgot about that too. Um, I don't know if you saw, but um, I've officially applied for the circle. Oh yeah, yeah. So both you and Leanne have done that, and it would be amazing yeah. if you both got on, especially yeah. on the same episode. That'd be fucking amazing. It'd be a lot better for me because she's already said she's going to go in as out as herself, and I am totally going to be a catfish on there. Do, do you know the whole way it works on this? No. It's you go in, and it's basically you're all in like separate apartments, and it's like um, essentially like Facebook the reality show. It's like psychology to the like just. The epitome of like just watching yeah. people send themselves crazy, trying to figure out what each other's saying by the messages they send each other on, like um, instant messenger kind of thing. Yeah. And some people are real people, some people are catfish, and I'm totally going to be a catfish because it'd be so much fun to just fuck with people. Yeah. <laughs> so much fun. See how far I can push <laughs> it. <laughs> I don't even I mean, want to yeah. say what my planned. I've already got my persona in my mind, what I'm going to do. I don't even want to say, just on a crazy chance I get in. And I, I, don't, yeah. I, don't, I don't want Leanne to know. You never know. I don't want that to happen. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that'd be amazing. It wouldn't. I, I, I guarantee yeah. I'd hate it, to be honest with you. I fucking hate it. <laughs> I fucking just, hate it. I wouldn't want to deal with it, yeah. Just the whole <laughs> thing. Like, I have to message people. Ugh. I have to talk yeah. to them. Ugh. Can I not just sit over there and just... No, ugh. Oh, yeah. That's the problem, isn't it? You've got to then you know, commit to the whole thing and like focus on it and carry it through. And it's like, who's got the time? Like, yeah. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I've got like a whole story out of something I'd have to. Yeah. But then again, I, I know it's how you feel like all through the year, isn't there? So I'm yeah, I, I get, I, don't that or... I get messed up by various things at various times. I get a couple of moments of peace throughout the year, but like I get messed up by fungal spores in the autumn. I get fucked up by, um, 
you know, actual plants during the summer and shit like that. It's a oh, whole... I do that year round. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, now I get like patches. <laughs> <laughs> no, <yeah>. Fuck's sake! <laughs> Fuck's sake. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Post-apocalyptic metal treehouse. You can find it on SoundCloud, YouTube, iTunes, Stitcher, um, Spotify. I think I didn't say that one. You can basically <laughs> just, you know, you can find it everywhere. And it's a one-man sketch show. I play all the characters. I write all the stuff. Pretty good. It's got the return of Jason Statham. Um, and, oh, uh, Jason Statham, I am. <laughs> 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 oh, Sneva, but... Yeah. No, when I'm doing a Jason Statham, it all comes from the top of the nose. And the thing oh, about a Jason yeah. Statham is you've got to make sure your teeth stay together as much as possible throughout Think all together. conversations. Oh, okay. okay. <laughs> I think yeah. that way. Yeah. He's always angry. He's always staring yeah. at you yeah. like that. He's going to kick yeah. you in the balls yeah. before the Germans get here. <laughs> I, I would love to see Jason Statham versus the classic Germans. <laughs> oh, Oh, that would be brilliant. That would, to be fair, with the kind of films he does, I am shocked there isn't a Jason Statham versus Nazis film. That sounds exactly fair, like the kind of film he would make. Yeah, to be fair, I, I've got I've got part of the whole sketch show is time travellers and Jason Statham is eventually spoilers everyone, eventually going to be hunting down these time travellers like a, a time travelling terminator. <laughs> <laughs> that was but Jason also- Statham. Also sounds like a perfect role for Jason Statham as well. Yeah. And really so is. I could potentially have them in a Nazi environment and just have Jason Statham roundhouse kick some fucking Nazis. <laughs> um, I'll tell you what, I'll go first because then I've got more time to drink and I can do my story while I have some semblance of soberness. Excellent. I don't already, so it's never going to get worse than it oh, is. Oh, I don't. Time. That's the thing. I can already yeah. feel like <laughs> you're all over the shop, to be honest with you. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, same here. This is going to be a very chaotic episode, ladies and gentlemen. I am. Um, I am. Um, yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? I, I'm, 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 very, I'm very intoxicated. You know what, though? Actually, I was, I was about to say, maybe you can go first because yours are free. But I like what your, yours is a bit different than what we've done last time because mine's true crime, yours is a bit yeah. different. So I think we'll carry on with mine with the true crime from before and then we'll lead into yours after. Let me just drink this Okay. Way. So this is the story of Henry Lee Lucas. Do you know that name at all? No. Okay. Okay. So just... A little basic thing. Henry Lee Lucas was a necrophilic, nec, necroph, necrophilic, necrophiliac. necrophiliac. Yeah. No, yeah. necrophilic serial killer who yeah, has been. Okay. So, been, oh god. Yeah, necrophilic serial killer who is thought to be, in some way or another, linked to anything from three hundred to three thousand murders. What the fuck? <laughs> this is a fucking story for you, dude. This is how. <sighs> He has other names that he goes by, but that ruins it if I say that. It is, yeah. Well, it doesn't ruin it at all, to be honest, but it might do. So either way, I'm not going to say it. Uh, so a little bit of background about the dude first. Then Lucas was born in Virginia in 1936 and was the youngest child of nine. Um, his father was an alcoholic named Anderson No Legs Lucas because, <laughs> as you guessed, he had this, no legs. <laughs> he had no arms. <laughs> no, he, he had no legs. Yeah, he had no legs. <laughs> um, lost him in a workplace accident, though. But don't feel too sorry for him because apparently he was a violent alcoholic. Um, but he was the nice pair in attitude because the mom, also an alcoholic, also especially no, well, sorry, also violent, but especially violent. She would physically abuse the dad and mainly Lucas himself out of all the children in general. Um. Oh, if you're unsure of how messed up his mom was, she was also a prostitute who would force her son, Lucas, to watch as she entertained her clients. Oh. She would also dress him in women's clothes and even once hit him so hard in the head with a plank of wood that he was a, uh, when he was a kid that he spent three days in a coma. Uh, when he was 10, he got into a fight with one of his brothers, which resulted in an injury to his eye, uh, which his mom ignored for days to the point it became so infected that his eye had to be removed and replaced with a glass eye. 
resulting in one of his particular names that he would go by later on. Oh my god, why is it? It's like we always say, man. It's like you don't, you know, sociopaths, psychopaths, things like that. They're they're, they're all among it us. All... But if you yeah. fuck them up at childhood, that's when shit goes wrong, man. <laughs> Yeah, well, I think I think a lot of it. Me personally, I think a lot of it is the more nurture thing rather than I think it's that that's the right way. The nurture rather than nature. Nurture versus is more like exactly, yeah, yeah. Because there's like there's two percent of the population psychopaths or sociopaths, whatever, and like not that many people act on murder just because they're a psychopath. I, you know, I, they, I they because yeah. they've been brought up in a normal family. They've got normal sort of. They've got their own moral compass, whether it affect whether they care about other people or not is different, but they've got they their own. Know it and they understand it. Yeah. And yeah. the I've got only a good, I've thing got a that ever to, triggers um... the fucking nasty shit is when you fucking treat them like shit when they're a kid. Don't treat your kids like shit. <laughs> <laughs> Unless a dick at the stone, you know. Yeah, well yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um no, I, I know what you're saying, saying. I'm just gonna you know? quickly say to my brother that I'm uh... No is um yeah, I was just going to say, anyway, I've got um, a friend who uh, says, like, you know, that he fought for a while. He has like psychopathic tendencies, but he is, I know, to be a lovely person. It doesn't yeah. mean you're an evil person. It just means you don't have as much comprehension of emotions. Yeah. It doesn't mean you're necessarily going to kill everyone. <laughs> it's yeah, it's a psychological thing. condition. And, like, you yeah. know, it does tend to have certain things in the traits, like... Um, there was a guy who's a really renowned like doctor who studied psychopathy because he is a psychopath himself. And he was like, Oh yeah. You know, um, I didn't go to my own mother's funeral because I didn't see, you know, I wasn't all that interested or I wasn't bothered. And oh, it's like, well, you know, it's, what's it going to affect me? You know, she's, she's already dead and it's going to upset the other people. I don't really care about them. That was like his entire opinion. Yeah. 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 Um, and then uh, there's also the, the the other side of it, which is like I listened to an audio book I've got, which is Andy McNabb and another sci- a scientist who he's worked with, and it's called The Good Psychopath's name. Guide to Success. Uh, yeah, well, basically, yeah, uh, Andy McNabb. Hang on a second. God damn. <laughs> if you're wondering why the sound keeps cutting out, people, and you're listening to the audio version, Nathan has got a tickly nose today. Got the tickly yeah. nose. Mm-hmm. Yeah, um, but basically, he he did a book with this um, this scientist, and it's base. It is a good psychopath's guide to success, and it is like, oh well, you look at the world in this particular way, and this is the way a psychopath looks at it. These are the traits you can take from being a psychopath, which are beneficial to your own life, and how you can implement them in a way that makes you feel confident about yourself. Like one of the things that got me to go to the gym when I was sort of, you know depressed and shit but i i I, i'd started pushing myself to do it was Mm -hmm. listening to the book and he goes in it uh, the way i see going for a workout isn't um i don't miss workouts because that's just or i can't miss a workout because that's like that's demanding of you he's like i don't miss workouts yeah and it's like that 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 mean because that's that psychopathic trait of like Oh yeah, no, but I'm better. I'm better. I am better than that. I'm going to prove I'm better than that. It's that sort of weird internal logic that they've got. And it's like you can use that yourself just by switching that wording around in your head. It's like I don't miss workouts. Every single time I said yeah. that to myself, I'd get up and go. Yeah, no, I can really weird. get that frame of mind. That yeah. you've just made me worried that I'm a psychopath and I didn't realise it, because that sounds like <laughs> I made myself to do things. So <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. No, but that's 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 exactly it. Like, the, you don't have to be a psychopath to have these yeah. tendencies either. You can. We're all on a spectrum of psychopathy, just like people are on a spectrum for autism or on a spectrum yeah. for yeah, yeah, yeah. I've had this yeah. conversation. I can't remember what it was. But I was having that conversation about some. Oh, I'll right, we'll come back from whatever it was. But yeah, yeah. And I'm just going to blow the bloody nose again. I mean, um, just to finish that little bit anyway, while you're doing that, um, by 11 years old after this. So this was a year after uh, the I thing. Um, Lucas was a borderline alcoholic um, who had in- yes. who had been introduced to bestiality and animal torture by his older brother and uncle. Oh, for fuck's sake! Um, 
I don't know why that made me laugh. Like, I do. Um, just, <laughs> not, it's no, this just part, horrible. This yeah. next part, I mean, I was about, I'm about to oh, say, uh, oh, when Christ. Lucas was 13, though, his father, who is a dick, remember, his father yeah. died of hypothermia after passing out drunk in a blizzard. <laughs> why was he out uh, drinking when he has no legs? In a blizzard? With Without no legs. Else anyway, and there's so much that I don't understand about Because the only other person who'd give him a hand was his wife, who'd fucking beat the shit out of him. He's got the thumbs up than this other one. <laughs> oh, it's not. I don't know why I find that so funny, but it is. <laughs> <laughs> he was not a nice guy, that's why. Nobody in yeah, this that's story is it. a nice person. Well, yeah, very every, few yeah. people in this story are nice people. So yeah, feel free yeah. to laugh at them. <laughs> <laughs> That's what this is all about. It's about kill them with comedy people. God damn it, we're here to entertain you. Fucking hell. <laughs> and get food by feeling like bad people. That too. Yeah. For this reason, anyway. So that was um, up until... Where was that then now? That was up until he was 13. So yeah. after this, kind of kicks up a little bit more. So during... Okay, so during a later interview, Lucas would um, explain about this next bit I'm going to say now, just I thought it made sense to include it now anyway. Um, So when Lucas was 14 or 15, he abducted an unknown girl from a bus stop, beat her, raped her, strangled her to death. When he was 14 or 15, that kind of age, apparently. So he's already gone past that point, it seems. Yeah. Um. The year after that, he received his first prison sentence when he was, he was arrested for burglary. Uh, he spent a year in a juvenile detention centre, uh, but apparently with his running water and electricity, it was, a, it was apparently a huge step up from the cabin he lived in with his family at the time. So he was like, oh, great, like going on holiday, I'll kill more. <laughs> yeah. So de- definitely, you know, he, he, he definitely has respect for authority at this point. You know? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, so, damn it. Uh, later on in 1954, so I believe that was a few years after this, a year or two, I forget the actual date now, but it doesn't matter. He was once again charged with burglary, but this time he was um, a, of adult age, or treated as an adult at least anyway. Uh, he was given six years in actual prison, but he was released five years later in 1959, um, a year early, despite attempting to escape prison twice in that time. Yeah, okay. Uh, not the worst, though, trust me, when it comes to the whole prison stuff. Yeah. Um, okay, you know, I'll get to it now, actually, because this in a sec. Were um, they just sort of overcrowded or something? We're like, yeah, you hold know that what, you probably were hold, trying to do a saver. Hold that for particularly. Um, after this, he moved to his sisters to get away from his mother. Um, right. However, his mother tracked him down, and apparently they got into an argument, and when she was trying to force him um, to move back home... So yeah, they got into a fight, sorry, and she was trying to argue to move, and he, she wanted him to move back home to take care of her, etc. Yeah. And somehow that resulted in him stabbing her in the neck in what he referred to as self-defense. That's what you do <laughs> when a woman's attacking you. You stab them in the neck. That's the only way you can defend yourself. It's the only it's possible funny. way as, as a grown man that you can defend yourself against a frail woman is by stabbing them in the fucking yeah. neck. <laughs> I mean, Jesus don't get me wrong. Christ. We've already learned this woman. Not a nice person. Not yeah, a nice terrible person. person. Shitty person. But nonetheless, the, you know, this and, is messed up. And But to turn around and logically think, are you saying self-defense is going to make sense? Shockingly, I'm going to yeah. shock you now, Nathan. I'm going to utterly shock you. The jury right. didn't buy it. Didn't uh, buy it. What a surprise. I know. This is amazing. What a revelation. I call kangaroo court. <laughs> yeah. So kangaroo is coming though. Uh, so he was found guilty of second degree murder. I forget which one exactly that is. I think that's one where you don't God. 100% premeditate it. Um, yeah. And sentenced to 20 to 40 years in prison. The end. It's not. No. <sighs> Basically what happened was... He was released 10 years later due to overcrowding in prison. He should have oh, been there. Oh, for fuck's for 40 sake. Years. <laughs> should have been there for 20 to 40 years, at least 30. You would think 30, oh. 35 probably. 10 years. Yeah. That should have been the end of this story. That right there should have been the end of this story. Yeah, it should have been, oh, this man never gets out because he's a danger to society. But no. <laughs> <laughs> 
Oh god. Oh shit. It's always kind of goes the same way with these stories, doesn't it? It's always just a complete mm. fuck up somewhere in the justice yeah. system. Was... Well, how yeah. do people? Do... In fact, the I only mean, one we've seen that didn't have me. that many fuck ups in the in the uh, in the justice system was Flight Six Two Nine or whatever yeah. it was. Yeah, that one. Everyone, it was clear cut. This man's a monster. He's never coming out of jail. You know, was, like and oh, but, yeah. That was more just yeah. pure stupidity of the person doing it to let him down. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> but all of these other ones, it's just been like really nasty fuckers getting away with horrendous shit on just dumbass cops' time. <laughs> it literally, that's the thing, isn't it? It literally does come down to that. We've said it before. It comes down most of the time to either someone being really dumb and getting themselves doing something stupid and getting caught. Because obviously, yeah. these stories you only know about the ones where they're caught. You yeah. know. It always comes down to someone's done something really stupid and got caught, or the police fucked up for ages and then just didn't for one point, or the did yeah, fuck the police up or the court somewhere in the law system. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <sighs> and this is no different God. in some manner. Yeah. So this is where you will definitely, if you haven't already, if you haven't already, you will definitely stop feeling sorry for Mr. Henry Lee Lucas in a moment. <laughs> definitely. <laughs> I already had by this point. I'm sure most people already have. But yeah, this is. Like I don't think there's anyone going, oh, what two. a poor lamb. <laughs> <laughs> well, at this point, I suppose the mom, you know, like abusing for ages. So you can see, you know, this was like yeah. the first film. This is now the sequel where a whole new cast come in, basically. <laughs> okay. <laughs> So after being released, um, ten year, uh, like what, thirty years early, um, yeah. he was quickly arrested again for attempting to kidnap three girls. Oh God! And then after that, he, I don't know, it didn't really say how much, but he got out again because he eventually then, once leaving prison once more, um, he moved to a mushroom farm he ran with his new wife that he has met, and he married very quickly. But they broke up and divorced very quickly when she found out that he was abusing her two daughters. Oh, for fuck's sake. Yep. At this point, he started drifting around the south of America for quite a few years until, um, no, sorry, in 1976, he met and started a friendship with another fellow equally messed up scum of the earth individual called Otis Tool. He was a literal tool. <laughs> <sighs> Uh, um, so, so there's there's two equally horrendous people just happily <laughs> ro- winding their way around the back countries of America, like just doing all manner of horrendous shit. Well, I think they settled down a little bit at this point because um, mm. he moved in with Tool. Uh, but it does talk about that they travelled around too. So I think they were kind of travellers, but they still lived in one place at this point. So half and half, you know. Uh, yeah. But he moved in with Tall and Tall's 10-year-old niece, Becky Powell. Oh, for Whom fuck's Lucas sake. would quickly fall yeah. head over. He yeah. was four in love. Oh, for fuck's sake. Um, <sighs> of course he did, because he's a horrendous pervert. <sighs> uh, yeah, I mean, there's a lot more to that story there, but we'll get onto that later on. We'll come back. Yeah. Um, the main thing you need to know um, for now is that for the next few years, they would all live together. Tall and Lucas worked together with Rufus. Um, oh, and a few years after this, uh, Lucas and Becky, the young niece, were in an active relationship with each other. She was also in love with him. You know. Oh, God. Basically, yeah. Uh, uh, that's not grooming at all. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I was about to say, yeah. imagine like you know, she was with like we'll learn later on about Tall a bit more. The guy that she lived with, the uncle. God knows yeah. the kind of shit that she had to deal with, man. Um, uh, but they wouldn't stay around Tall for long, no, um, because um, yeah, this would lead to uh, Lucas and Becky running away together and leaving Tool alone, um, which was said to enrage Tool to the point so much that he went on a random killing spree, resulting in the deaths of nine people from six different states over a couple of months, I think it was. Jesus Christ. But it seems like that was just what they know of, put it that way, you know. Yeah. 
Because, you know, you, that time especially, like, you can't really be 100% sure of what's happening. What do you mean, sorry? It's not like there's shitloads of cameras around and stuff oh, like that. Yeah. It's not like you can easily see, you know, it's not like that you can track people and get DNA evidence easily and stuff like that. Yeah, just... and the concept of serial killers, like, didn't start coming out until this time either because this is, like, the yeah. 70s or uh, or late 70s, early 80s now, somewhere around yeah. there at this point. Yeah. Um, and after this as well, Lucas and Becky then moved to Texas from Florida they were in before because... Uh, oh, think... well, of course he was a Florida yeah. man. Yeah, I mean, he, he, he has all the hallmarks. <laughs> and we know Florida is like the epitome of a well-run city, even now. Oh, yeah. Even yeah, the, yeah, state, the, 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 the finest state in America, a shining example of perfect freedom. <laughs> <laughs> and of the smart thinking, though, of really giving yeah. a real essential businesses the power that they need during certain yeah times you know and, and releasing releasing nile crocodiles into into you know um public swamps that's what that's that what again? you want as well i've heard something about that what was that again remind yeah. me of this yeah someone someone in florida because it's florida went you know what i need I need myself one of those uh, Nile crocodiles because my friend next door, he got himself a big ass alligator, but that alligator is only like seven foot long. I can get myself a, a nine foot long Nile alligator, Nile crocodile, have myself a party. <laughs> you know what happened? You know what happened? A what, big what? fucking hurricane came through and all of his Nile crocodiles escaped. And now oh. there's Nile crocodiles wild in fucking Florida. <laughs> Did you see that program <laughs> Ross Kemp did the other day? No. He did a British, basically a British equivalent of Tiger King, but not just focusing on tigers, just seeing what exotic pets rich people in England had. Yeah. Yeah. Um, a lot more Nile crocodiles in England than you think, owned by people that should not be owning them. Oh fuck! I'm, oh, I mean a lot, a lot, a lot. One yeah. guy has now thirty-two at time of recording. Why? Well, he has two full-grown ones and a load of babies, and he swims with the but... full-grown ones. No, oh god! <laughs> He's like, oh, they love me, you know, like they know who I am. Blah, 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 no, blah. they don't. They're they think, reptiles. No, they, you just fed them first, probably. They're just not hungry at that time. You're lucky. But apparently, yeah. he was saying as well, he had some weird connection with them. Like he walked in the one time. Um, to the enclosure. I don't know. He made out like he just sits around the enclosure. And I could believe it from the way he was talking. Um, mm. But he just sat down and it was after his dad had died and he was depressed. And the one just came up right by him and just flopped his whole head onto his lap and just kind of lay there with him. I mean, they're very old animals. They've been around. Maybe. Long, you know, since like dinosaurs and all that. I yeah. understand. I'll, that I'll, I'll... I have... I reckon yeah. animals, a lot of animals, well, I, I fully reckon a lot of animals can develop empathy and stuff completely. Yeah, Not a, you know, that... a maybe, because it's a, it's a fucking evil crocodile. <laughs> I'll give it a maybe. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I'm saying. Like, they may do empathy, but they, they just, you're just food to them. Yeah, exactly. Like, or vending machines don't at give the most. Sh- yeah. At the most, yeah. they see you like, we see vending machines. That's it. Yeah. God. Oh man, there's there's more, but honestly, there's um, giant snakes and loads of people have them, not just one. And oh, it's, yeah, it's a whole thing here. No, why do I don't understand people's obsession with it? It's just I don't something. understand it. They seem yeah, to they, love they, it. They yeah, do generally. Well, that's the love thing. It. Of course, of course they do. But you can also love a dog just as much. Probably more. You know what I'm saying. I hope probably I'd more. Hope, I'd hope more yeah. for them. Yeah. Because, like, the dog isn't going to potentially eat your children. Well, it might do, but less oh, likely to. Yeah. <laughs> a, a, a spiky-sized dog, my giant-sounding dog Spike, you know. A dog his size. Oh, I yeah. don't know what I'm trying to make out. He's yeah. tiny, but he's got a giant dog's nail. Yeah, yeah. he's fine. <laughs> <clears throat> um, yeah, he's not going to be winning any fights against Godzilla. Um... <laughs> hey, hey, hey. hey. <laughs> Now, Spike, he may be a chilled out dog, and very indifferent to the world, doesn't give a shit about most things. I have quite a kinship with him because of that very reason. But he is an angry dog. He's not. He doesn't fucking give a shit. I'm not even going to bother trying to make that joke. He doesn't give a fuck, man. 
Yeah. Literally. He pays so little attention to everything that you can get right up next to him. And he can hear, but you can get right up next to him. And he just doesn't know you're there. <laughs> just from pure ignorance. <laughs> anyway. Oh, that's amazing. Some dogs just would never survive in nature. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> I love how dogs uh, have evolved as well, like their eyes to be more human like. That's crazy. Yeah. Like, yeah. Just that concept is ridiculous. Have you ever seen the, there's a YouTube video of, um, I think it's uh, either a Dalmatian or a Labrador or something like that, who thinks it's all that and he starts barking through the bars at a wolf and the wolf <laughs> doesn't even, doesn't even make a noise, just looks at it like, and the and the dog just goes. <laughs> <laughs> it's amazing. In fact, I'm, I might uh, I, if if you'll indulge me, I might try and send you a link if I can find it because it's beautiful. <laughs> well, um, send me the link and then we'll play it after this story bit then, because then we can yeah. use that in intro for the second part and the next one. Yeah, yeah. Um. Okay then. So, because I've got a little bit to get through on this, because this is still kind of the lead up to the story in a way or the first yeah. half um so the details are a bit weird from here um so they went to texas him and becky got a job working for an elderly woman called kate rich um and it seems like the neighbors in the area ran them out of their house were apparently cashing checks in her name but they didn't say who her was whether they meant katie or becky and I yeah. just think personally, just saying like they ran him out of the town because they could see he was in a relationship with a child. Personally, yeah. that's more likely to get you run out of town. And yes, it should do. Yes. Maybe don't run the child out too. Maybe put a child in some care instead of running her yeah. out too. But yeah, yeah, maybe maybe just sort of hog tie the dude, uh, strap him to the back of a horse, slap its ass as re- as hard as you can, and send it towards a den of bears. <laughs> And uh, just mm, yeah, they should have done know. that at this point. <laughs> yeah, very shortly after this, um, on August twenty fourth, nineteen eighty two, Henry Lee Lucas drove him and Becky to a field in Denton, Texas, a different area, and killed her with a knife. Dismembered her Bobby, bo- Bobby dismembered dismembered her body, and scattered the pieces in a nearby field. Well, not before having sex with it, of course. Jesus Christ. But then he also, three weeks later, convinced the elderly Kate Rich, the woman that gave a job to him and Becky, to help him come and search for her because she was lost. And he promptly killed her, stuffed her body into a drainage pipe hole so that he could return to it later and have sex with it, which apparently he did a lot. What the fuck, man? Until... Until he learned he was the main suspect in her disappearance, Kate's, and decided to recover her body and bring it back to the cult place he was staying in at the time. Yep, a cult. There's a cult in this too, but I haven't got time to get into it. (laughs) 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 He seems to be worse than the cult, in all honesty. So we're going to give the cult a buy on this one. Yeah. But he used the communal stove um, to secretly burn away her body. Yeah, I don't know how. <laughs> I don't know how that happened, but no, that's that's horrible. Like this guy is just fucking disease as a human. Yeah, you ain't heard nothing. You know, oh fucking hell! How can it get worse? <laughs> <laughs> so he was arrested on firearm charges um, by the police. Firearm charges. On the signs of it, they were just getting him on something to get him in there to interview. And what what's, what I got to try and remember is this is the seventies as well. It's like it's not eighties now. It's not like well, eighties. Fucking okay. hell! This, is, um, like, this isn't this isn't like this isn't of mice and men times. This isn't like yeah. yeah. Someone is you know invisible. Like I'm saying, it's not it, you know these when people. I first read this, I thought it was based much earlier, just because of some yeah, of the yeah. Because it's just from what he does, it sounds like yeah. it would almost have to be just to get away with this shit. God damn it, man. Um, I mean, he was arrested on the firearm charges, um, but during the course of the interviews, he was put through a lie detector test in regards to both of the missing people. 
which he passed, parts, obviously. Yeah, which he passed because yeah. because psychopaths fucking do. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, every single uh, time, and that's what people never fucking tell you is that psychopaths do, and quite regularly, normal people fail when they shouldn't because they're scared, and it gives yeah. you very similar results. Yeah. Which lie detectors are fucking pointless. They really. I mean, are. I'm, I'm going to do something on that one of these fucking days. I'm going to do the why lie detectors are fucking bullshit Definitely. because they are pointless. If you ever need a lot of examples for this, um, Netflix, I think we talked about it before, the confession tapes, mm-hmm. the majority of them, mm-hmm. or a lot of them anyway, are based on something to do with messed up thing. And then it's not even like just a yes or no for the machine. You've got to be able to read it as well and what each bit yeah. means and get the base. Because they're reading, right. they're reading like sweat and yeah. and sort of heart, um, like heart rate so and good. also your bunghole. They are detecting your the, the movements of your bunghole. Oh. oh, yeah. <laughs> See, I, I, I'm sweet because apparently if you have like any kind of like ever had like an, any, um, what's that called? You know, like when they noted down like doctors and stuff, any kind of anxiety or anything, then apparently yeah. that kind of just frees you up of that. I'm yeah. saying this like I'm going to commit a murder, but if I if if I was ever <laughs> taken in and questioned with a polygraph, at least I can not do Yeah, you've got, you've, got your, you've got your excuse. Yeah, exactly. There we go. Yeah, yeah, we'll yeah. go with that. Yeah, same with me. I've got I've got shit tons of anxiety and stuff like that. It's like that. If I ended up in one of those things, I'd just be buggered. I wouldn't you know be like you know. I I've been thinking this for a while. I think anxiety is just a normal emotion that everyone has, just different levels. Yeah. People think a lot of people think that a lot of people don't have it, but everyone when they are honest, everyone does. To it, a everyone extent. has it. Yeah. Yeah. It's just different levels, exactly. Yeah. Then other people are, um, different people have different triggers that set it off. The problem with anxiety oh, yeah. is when it's um, is when it's all encompassing, when like you every single thing that you're planning on doing or or want to do is is in your mind going to be a complete cata- catastrophe, or you know just talking to people you're like, well, you know they're going to hate me and I'm going to be wasting their time and shit like that. Just yeah. Yeah, so benefit from anxiety as well, though. I've said this a lot. Yeah, like I think my anxiety helps me because I overthink everything, but that also helps yeah. so much with creativity and creating stuff. It helps yeah. so much. Yeah, there's a reason why people who tend to have depression and anxiety and stuff like that try and you know be funny because <laughs> <laughs> you know, no, it's just yeah, if I... you're creative. You're a creative, super smart motherfucker. You just can't. Your brain's too big. It's too crazy. Yeah. It's just all over the place. There's just going to be some badness that comes with it too. We can't help it. But it's also it's that thing that I think has been attributed to Robin Williams, whether it's true or not, yeah. I can't be sure. But it's like you know, if you if you're a, if you're sort of spending all your time feeling like shit and feeling sad, that you try your best to make sure no one ever else has to feel like that. Yeah. So you try and be funny and make their days better and be a good person and shit. You know? I think it's as well now, like it's one of those things as well that now it's a lot more acknowledged. People don't feel like it's, you know, you know, people acknowledge the fact that it's oh, like people just feel shitty sometimes. It's okay. It's yeah. cool. Yeah. And it's okay to feel that way. Yeah. Yeah. That's why God invented marijuana. Yeah. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> oh, um, God. So well, like, how much how, how much worse is this shit gonna get? Yeah, I'm just trying to find where I got you then. <laughs> uh, so like... Okay, yeah. So okay, so yeah. So um, the whole polygraph and all that it didn't get done with that. But lucky for us, somehow the Texas Rangers did manage to get him to confess. He confessed to oh, the murders of uh, Becky and Kate. Uh, he would recant it afterwards, saying that he was coerced into it. But it's a bit yeah. stupid to say that when you said to them, "Oh yeah, this is where I killed them. This is where we dispose of the bodies." And they go there and find the evidence. And they find the bodies. The yeah. bodies. <laughs> they find bones. Yeah. They find bones a bit. Yeah, find- it was bullshit. Yeah. I was lying. Yeah. I just happened yeah. to come across those bodies the other day and didn't say anything because you know it's just a body. To <laughs> <laughs> be people that I knew. Well, they couldn't prove who yeah. was obviously at that oh, point. God. But- um yeah so um, also, after... what's the thing with with people fucking rotten flesh what is that oh people fucking rotten flesh yeah where the fuck what the fuck makes a human brain go you know what i really want to stick my dick in something that's not alive anymore 
something that is actually putrefying around my cock. Mm -hmm. Like, (laughs) fucking Jesus Christ. I can't think of anything more disgusting in my entire fucking life. I'm sure we could if we really tried. Sure, I'm sure we could. I don't know, mate. I don't know. That sure. like that if some if someone said, Do you want to either bang a corpse or have your cock chopped off? I'd probably go for the cock chop. I mean, there's many, many things to, to, I don't even know how to I, I'll no, go. No, I'd fuck the corpse. What are you on about? No. No, I, I would no, I'd 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 pick my cock up, I'd go to a fucking surgeon, I'd get it reattached, or I'd get an I would get a transplant <laughs> cock. I would do anything to avoid getting myself inside a corpse in any way, shape, or form. I, I would do many things, but I don't know if chopping off the little tattoo is where I'd go. I mean, the big tattoo is where I'd go. I would do anything for love, but I won't do that. <laughs> um, in regards <laughs> to Mr. Lucas, um, <laughs> he pled guilty to the murders of. Uh, Oh, he did. Yeah. So, okay. I, yeah. I forgot that that was actually what happened in the end. He did plead guilty to the murders of Becky Powell and Kate Rich. Yeah. Because then after that, on trial, on trial in court, he was like, yeah, I killed them. Oh, by the way, I also killed over a hundred other people. So this what leads us fuck? now to the many, 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 many murders. Many. Fucking <laughs> hell. Many. Right, okay. This is where we get obviously I'm not gonna go through them all or anything. I'll yeah, just yeah. Pull out yeah. Some points, you know, just to fill you in. So give you over the flavor, the, yeah. Uh, um, and there's a, there is um oh actually I'll probably even laugh about that actually. Um over the following year and a half, a task force led by the Texas Rangers was put together to investigate all the murders um that he was claiming that he confessed to, uh, to check the validity of the confessions and all that. Um, during all of that, uh, 213 were initially confirmed from his confession. And so going by the evidence, yeah. I don't know how many were, you know, unprovable. I don't know at this point, because I mean, that makes sense that you wouldn't be able to prove them. Yeah. Because it's 1980 something still at this point. So yeah, but fucking hell. Yeah. So a few of the ones then. So, um, obviously, yes. One of the ones he, um, owned up to was that one we mentioned earlier his first sexual experience that was when he abducted the oh. girl and, yeah that was i'm assuming why he brought that one up um he explained that after being caught abusing his new wife's children he uh, like we mentioned earlier he lived as a drifter for a bit um, and this is where the real murder streak um started as he discriminately raped and killed women he came across during his travels just literally walked around saw someone killed and raped them walked off yeah. Jesus Christ. Um, and then obviously he would give them, you know, basic ideas um, as to where he was and stuff. And then they would be like, they'd look and say, okay, and then figure out what they could prove, what they couldn't prove. Because he couldn't remember most of him. He does a lot, put it that way. Yeah, because it seems like this was something he did on a compulsion. Like if he just, <sighs> oh, there, I happen to be walking yeah. down a road and there's a random woman and there's no one else here. Time to, to kill honest, rape her body. The quote, Jesus the Christ. Quote just made it sound more as if it was just entertainment to him. Um, and then after meeting Tool. That's worse, if anything. Yeah, if it's yeah, not like. Definitely, it, definitely. Oh my God. After meeting Tool, the one we mentioned earlier, moved in with him, um, he explained how they actually committed roughly about 108 murders together during the time. Um, and that was another thing. Tool was said to be very angry with Lucas when he learned that at the same time, Lucas was still murdering people on his own on the side too. There was rumours that those what? two were involved in a relationship together too. So Yeah, obviously. There. Obviously. Yeah, the, like, was... I, like, genuinely, that was the only thing I was going to say earlier yeah. on was like, were those two banging? Because it seems like something they would do. I had quite a socio- uh, different. I've had some weird friends. I had quite a sociopathic friend though, who was like very, very good friend of mine, and you, that can happen even without that because he once smashed a friend's car because I went to go and see one of the Avengers film with um, my kid's mum at the time. So there are people that are that weird. Wow. Yeah, there's, that generally happened. Yeah, that's <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and that's why I don't trust basis anymore, Nathan. 
so uh where did i get to then Lola lucas actually yeah okay so um also lucas stated yeah this is a good one oh, damn it i'll talk while I, while the noise happened then it's okay there will be oh. more okay okay <laughs> uh so lucas stated as well the tools preferred mo um so the way tools preferred to kill people um was to crucify his victims um then barbecue and eat them and lucas was adamant that he did not partake in the eating of their victims because because and i quote he didn't like barbecue sauce fucking hell that's yeah the, okay i mean no also, one so it would waste good fucking um <laughs> no one Jesus even mentioned barbecue Christ. sauce which is the worst part no one mentioned barbecue sauce. You don't have to have bar. I mean, I mean that's not the point, obviously. Yeah, but I. <laughs> you don't need barbecue. Um, I don't know where barbecue sauce even came from in the quote. No, it just obviously appeared. it's like just the way his mate liked to cook it. <laughs> <laughs> like, I would have eaten it if it wasn't for the barbecue sauce, but the barbecue sauce, you know, I just couldn't help it. I mean, oh I'm sorry, I, I just couldn't do it then. That was the bit that turned me off. And people. again, this is the eighties. Yep. This is the eighties. This is so weird that this is all happening. Like, oh my uh, god, Jesus! Mate, it gets, but it gets kind of worse from here in a different way now because upon learning, like the geographical scope, because they didn't realize at first how much of a traveler he was. For example, you know, they didn't learn, they didn't quite realize the geographical scope of it. So after a while, what they had to do was the task force would fly in from state to state to meet with the different police departments to go through the stories. Um, he was allowed to stay in motels, given full-on meals. He had a daily strawberry McDonald's milkshake allowance that he was given um, just to keep him sweet, it seems, you know, to keep... So that he would, you know, still talk about this stuff, not just close up because they were closing all the cases, obviously. Jesus Christ. Um, he, and if you're wondering, okay, so this, yeah, a couple of hundred, three or four hundred, how are we getting to... 3,000 and that. He also stated, for example, um, hence why I said he was connected to a lot of different ones. There's some other examples, but this is just one of them. Um, he was one of the ones that supplied the poison in the mass suicide of the People's Temple Court in Jonestown. For fuck! I'm not even sake. Too sure what that is, to be honest with you. Yeah, it's just it's, it's another one of the fucking mass suicide things. Like, fucking hell, man. It gets crazier. It gets crazier. Um, this is like the this guy is the Forrest Gump of murder. Like he has been everywhere. He's killed everyone. You know, you're never gonna beat him in fucking foulness. This is unbelievable. This story. We're, yeah, we're now going international too because apparently um, there was something that happened in Spain as well. I haven't got many details of that, uh, but there was something more specifically that happened in Japan. Um, and he got they got visited by Japanese law enforcement, uh, spoke to them and stuff, and he eventually confessed as well that he had indeed driven there from America and murdered various people. What the f so he, he used to go on murder holidays? Yeah, he, dro he, he drove to Japan. Jesus Christ, he even admitted to killing a Virginia school teacher who actually later turned out to be alive. Oh, okay, well then, fucking what? <laughs> Fuck. What I'm getting at, Nathan, one detective finally decided that maybe he's not being completely truthful here. Yeah. And after very, very, very minimal effort, he was able to prove that complete fact. He was able to prove a ridiculous amount of contradictions in all his stories. He was able to prove, for example, they would have had to travel for three days at 55 miles an hour in a busted up car that was a bit broken without stopping to commit these two particular murders, for example. He would have had to have done that. There was one, there was, um, hold on, me, right there, right there, right there. Um, okay, yeah. I'll get to that. Um, somehow they didn't think there was an issue when he claimed he also called, killed Jimmy Hoffa as well. They yeah, didn't question that either. <laughs> Basically, it was eventually proved that the Texas Rangers task force were given, giving him information about unsolved murders ahead of time. And then he was just saying, yeah, I did that, I did that, I did that, I'm the greatest. Yeah, Because it's a win-win. 
The Rangers yeah. look good with the Balasses. Lucas gets treated like a king still, gets all the attention that maybe he didn't get as a child in the way he wanted, for example. Oh, wow. you know, that, uh, let me let me give you the next little bit actually. Have you ever heard of orange socks? Murder orange victim. socks. Okay, there's some uh, famous thing where um, a body was found and they only had orange socks. This is where it all went a bit downhill for me. Oh, okay. Um, in the end, Lucas was found guilty of nine murders in Texas, including those of Becky Powell and Kate Rich, um, and the killing of someone else. He received a death sentence. Um, there's some other ones in there too that aren't included there for some reason. He received a death sentence in uh, for the 1979 murder of an unidentified woman in Texas, known only as known only as Orange Socks, because uh, mm. that was the only piece of clothing on her body. Still, this, however, was another murder that he could just never have committed because the what his work record once again so ridiculously easy to look at it and because apparently the Texas Rangers were like, no, we didn't do that on purpose. Is that what happened? Were we fooled? <laughs> he was at work at the time. Complete signed in. You could see it. So they should have. Ju- they could have literally just looked up the fucking data. But this was the one that he was actually sent to prison and sentenced to death for. So it kind of went. <sighs> I'm, I'm trying to find a good way to end this to make it sound like he got a bit of his just dessert in the end, but he didn't because in 1998, six days before his execution, his death sentence was commuted to life imprisonment by then governor of Texas, Mr. George W. Bush. And then on March 13th, 2001, he died in prison from heart failure at 64 because somehow, and I honestly don't know how, when he went into prison properly after all this documentary stuff, when he was walk around, there's videotapes and everything. Netflix is um, uh, the Confession Killer. Great documentary. It's like eight episodes long, and it goes through all this. There's so much like documentation yeah. of it. Um, he was a very skinny man, and then somehow, while on death row, he became a very big, plumpy man, and I don't understand how he had the availability to become so obese, which eventually killed him. He died from natural causes, because of stuff that happened on death, it just I don't understand how that happens. But I don't understand. I... <sighs> I don't know what the this this man's I story. It? It's so I, weird. Basically, it's so we weird. don't know what he did or didn't commit because the waters have been so muddied now. And of course, think... that's all part of his plan as well. Because, like, you can't if you if you if you're confessing to shit that's all over the place, you look like you're in, insane, or yeah. at the very least, or 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 you look like you're being set up by the police or made made to be a patsy. Like, there's I mean, loads of ways you can play it. This guy was so calculated. Ah, uh, you say that, but but then said, again, like he said, he drove to Japan. From America, yeah, yeah, that's 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 the other bit. It's like, okay, I was really thinking, well, maybe you could that. take a ferry, <laughs> but like, yeah. why wouldn't you fly? Um, because then like, there would be record of him flying. So I suppose maybe he was being smart. Damn it, maybe he was. Maybe, but I, I don't know. I mean, not. I don't know what what it sounds like to me is just a sick, twisted individual. Quite clearly, um, yeah. yeah, who. Sure. Provably did horrible fucking things and just wanted to extend his own pitiful, disgusting existence for as long as he could. Yeah. It seems uh, as though and... there's four definite murders they can attribute to him. Uh, his mom, yeah. um, that Becky, Denise, um, the older woman, Kate, and yeah. that officer. That I don't know who that one is. I didn't actually see that until he came up at the end there, but... yeah. I didn't get much chance to finish off the end as well as I wanted to. I wanted the reveal to be a bit better, to be honest, Nathan. But that's fine. It's that's just, just it's kind of one of them. As I was going through, I was like, I was thinking, how are they still believing this? And I was getting angry just reading it, just remembering, I just trying to figure out how dumb they are, whether yeah. they were doing it on purpose. I mean, I, and but if they were doing it on purpose, the police, the text, if they literally knew the whole time, I'm sure they were to an extent on purpose, but. Like, well, because if you would close you cases, cases, then you look better. And yeah, they were getting loads of extra funding and stuff. And apparently, the Texas Ranger, I remember this from the documentary, they looked bad before this, so they were trying to improve their image as well. Um, yeah, but you're doing it in ways that is very obviously gonna bite you yeah. in the very quickly. It's never, 
no one's ever gonna gonna look on it positively if you've fucked up this badly intentionally as well uh, like even in, and at best case scenario which when it comes out which it would all have always came out with how ridiculous it was because i mean there was even a um a newspaper guy uh, what was it? i did write it somewhere for the dalton herald or something something like that yeah figured it out as well the timings and some of the stuff just from the the um details because he's a journalist and the journalist wants to look through all the stuff and find out what the scoop is i imagine as opposed to just trying to get as many cases closed as they can. I mean, God. yeah, journalists definitely do that too. Investigative journalists, though, I kind of like. Some of them are really fucking good. Because a lot of Investigative the- journalists are, are a, you know, a double-ended sword, basically. Yeah, I was about to say, because like, they normally don't have, like, an agenda, but then I thought, wait, loads of them have an agenda. Loads of them have an agenda. But, yeah. like... Um, you know, it's all about vested interests at the end of the day, and you know what can you believe and what can't you? And yeah, that that is just that entire story is just intrigue and madness, yeah. and one of the nastiest fuckers who I've ever heard of. And you have no idea. Like he changed his stories in the end to saying that no, I just killed the three of them or the four of them. Um, yeah. No, he said three of them, but I don't think he was including his mother in it because he'd already been done for his mother. So four of them. But I don't think that's true. I don't think no, he killed. I think it's more. Others. I don't think. I don't think he killed all that. Yeah. Anyway, yeah. I think a few hundred was possible. Like the ones that he and his mate supposedly did, I could probably imagine that because there's some sort of corroboration there. Yeah, and I know that um, there's a lot of detail on him in the documentary that I just once again thank the cult. Um, I just it, it, this story would this story was already quite long. Like it would have been ridiculous long going through all of their stuff as well, you know. Yeah, yeah, but yeah, that's Mr. Henry Lee Lucas, aka the Confession Killer. I believe the Confession Killer is the name of the documentary on Netflix. Honest, it's it's a long one, but I reckon you'll get into it quite quickly if you do check it out. I... It's, it's because if you go through, yeah, you I, just... I mean, I, I'm gonna have to now because it's um, look at it the show that is... I did when you when you watch it and you're like, how, how are they yeah. going with how, like when you would the stupidity and just the general wanting of people sometimes that ignore stuff. And the best case scenario, it's just the epitome of psychology in the sense of people will see something and perceive something as they want that's the best I, case scenario yeah i don't think that was it though i just think it's horrible man i just think that whole fucking thing is so <laughs> horrible it's like all of the shit i don't want to have to deal with ever in my life and it was all just this guy <laughs> jesus yeah. christ as you all know out there on the killed in the comedy podcast we are all about the positive vibes here we're all, all about the positive vibes yeah <laughs> wow how do you segue away from that i know maybe i should have gone last <laughs> if anything my my stuff's going to be more more um well it's going to be different <laughs> well i suppose actually what we should do now then is say bye to everyone that's watching the part one of this because i like the part idea one oh, it's good yeah um, and then, obviously, if you're watching this on the Joe Pitt live stream, then part two is starting right now. Hello, everyone, and welcome no. to part two. Hello. 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 <laughs> oh, my God. Woo. God, it's been no. so long. Look how much whiskey I've still got. Yeah, same. this is not the same glass that I was just drinking at all. No. Oh, I can't. I had to one. buy a whole new bottle. I've been going for ages. I'm not man enough to be drinking today. I drank yesterday, and I just can't do two days in a row. Even yesterday, I didn't drink yeah. fuck all. I just had some drink. Yeah, I got really drunk the day before yesterday, which was not mm. smart. And then I <laughs> got less drunk yesterday because uh, I was hung the fuck over. And now I'm doing this, so more whiskey. <laughs> yeah, but it's Friday now, anyway, though. Yeah. Let's see. I, I was I was going to drink more. It's the weekend. I, I, I like having a drink when I do this with you, to be honest. It's fun to have a chat and have yeah. a drink. But, um, it is good, isn't it? Yeah. I got yeah. the boyos tomorrow, so I can't drink very much. Well, I say that. I don't really drink very much anyway. I'm very bad at drinking much. Yeah. A lot. Sorry. 
Yeah. Nah. I, I, I can't drink a huge amount anymore. It just fucks me up. Uh, like, you know what? Yeah. I can when I'm in the right situation, but I kind of like how much I can drink now because I enjoy having a drink, but then I don't want to go past a certain level. Whereas when I'm out and about, I forget that level exists. Yeah. Level, it's just not there. Yeah, it's been a long time since I've been like pub drunk. The last time I was truly pub drunk was well at the pub. I don't know. Yeah, <laughs> I was about to say, shockingly, it's got but, a um, yeah, it was I think it was it must have been December before lockdown all started. And even then it wasn't that much. I was still fairly functional. Like That's twenty nineteen. Yeah. Shit, I told someone the other day I've been doing comedy since 2019. That's bullshit then. <laughs> Way before that then. Like, no. we started around near the same time, I think. But I, I started... Uh... It's, it's with one of those things, it's, you know, if we get somewhere with it or when we do, it'll be a case mm. of, like, people asking, like, when did you start doing comedy? So, I'm not actually sure. <laughs> I can't yeah. remember. I'll check Facebook. I do have it. I do you. have it noted down on my phone somewhere, but I, I just can't be bothered to find it. <laughs> I, it's like you know, like, uh, I'm a, a, the same thing. Like you know, when like you'd be in school or something, and you'd like uh, say in school. Sorry, when you're like younger and that, you'd like really yeah. go out of your way to keep track of like how many people you would slept with or something. It's yeah. like when you get into comedy for a certain amount of time, you really keep track of how many gigs you've had. Yeah. I, I lost count very quickly. I got to. Yeah, I was like, oh, I'm on my 10th gig. And then it's like, oh, it's the 11th, 12th. How many weeks have I been doing it now? Okay, that many weeks. <laughs> so probably <laughs> average out. Probably about this. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've got. Yeah. I'm glad you said something, and I'm glad you said it because I forgot to mention it earlier. So I'll plug it in now for the beginning of part two. I kind of, Nathan, slightly mm. feel like I'm cheating on myself. I do. How so? Because, I'll tell you, because on the 23rd of April, I am going to be appearing on the Alternative Cobra Meeting Lockdown Comedy Quiz. Bloody hell. I'm cheating on my... Oh, it's a long name. I'm You're cheating to, I, on your I, own quiz, mate. Yeah. I'm looking forward to it. Um, it's, um, your own I don't flesh know. and blood. <laughs> <laughs> as long as I win while cheating on myself, I'm happy. It'll be all right then. Yeah. But from yeah. what I've seen, it looks like it's going to be a fun night. The 23rd. Um, I know the only other person that's on it at the moment is... I should, I've should. i done the same thing that I've made so many jokes with people on podcasts where you go to plug something and I'm like, you didn't write down the name of it. You didn't write down who was in it. What are you doing? I didn't write down who else was in it. Yeah. I'm not sure what <laughs> yeah. time it's on. I know it's the 23rd of April. I'm not, I can't remember now who's hosting it. I know who's a lovely guy. Um, yeah. I'm doing it with Ishi Khan, I think. I know. I'm not. I don't even know. I don't know. I know the name Ishi Khan is on it as well. And I know I know that okay. name. <laughs> I See, I, 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 mentally, I don't so. think I've. Yeah, I don't think I've done any remember. other other podcasts at all yet. I think it's all just been all been this stuff, which you know is is, is pretty good so far. But what more do you need? What more does anyone need yeah, in their life more than exactly. comedy podcasts and post some podcast yeah. Treehouse podcast, which is your own one that yeah. you do with all which you thought about? Yeah. 